Hi, this is Jim Brisson. I'd like to talk to you today about the inverse Conway maneuver. If you want any uh, tips or help on any of this stuff, just contact me at Jim Brisson at agilecoaching.org. Let's get rolling. Uh, so this is a system for product sales. And uh, you see there's a salesperson application. There's also a public web application for everybody to use. Um, there's a finance application so you can pay in three easy payments at $19.99 each. And there might be a portal for special pricing for special customers, maybe the government, big customers. You know, and also you have to manufacture your product, uh, so that needs software. You have to warehouse it after it's manufactured, and you have to be able to ship it. But uh, you found that there's some components that are reused across many, if not all, of these different applications. So your organization has put these components into uh, uh, as a separate section of the organization, and... Um, the catalog, pricing, search, cart, there's a variety of components that are in here that, are, uh, that have separate teams. And the team structure follows this, uh, the organizational structure basically, the team structure follows the architecture very closely. So there's, there's teams associated with the various applications and there are specific teams associated with the reused components. There's a specific team on catalog, for example, and a specific team on finance. Now, here's what happens with this kind of an organizational structure. It seems like a good idea. Let's, let's look at dependencies and what happens with dependencies. So there's a salesperson app. It's dependent upon a change in the cart. So the salespeople, uh, salesperson app people talk to cart people and say, you know, we need a change. And cart people say, hmm, if we do that, then we're going to need to change the pricing. So the salesperson app people say, hmm, we don't care about your problems. Uh, we just need this from you. So a separate meeting is held from cart to pricing, with pricing. The pricing people say is, give you a similar story saying, we're dependent upon the catalog. So there's a cascade of dependencies that happen here. There's a cascade of meetings that happened. And by the way, the catalog uh, says, well, it's gonna, it's gonna take us a couple of weeks to, to finish this. Pricing says, well, it's gonna take us four weeks to finish our piece. Then the cart says, well, it's going to take us two weeks. So now we're talking about, uh, you know, about eight weeks delay before the salesperson app actually gets their uh, requirement satisfied from the cart. So there's lots of meetings happening and there's lots of delays that are happening. So, you know, what else happens? So there's another dependency comes up. Finance says, we need a change in pricing. Pricing says, well, we need a change from catalog for that. Finance says, I don't care about your problems. Um, so two meetings happen. Again, similar story. There's a delay. It's going to take six weeks before finance sees anything. Similar for the public web application. They need to change the search. Search needs to change some catalog. So, so here's what happens, right? Catalog is working on a variety of things. And they have no idea who the user is. They have no idea what the requir what requirement was that, that started all of this. And similar for pricing, they don't, they don't necessarily know what's going on. They haven't talked to the, to, the, to the customer, certainly, and they haven't even talked to the application that talks to the customer. So there's not a lot of information being passed across. It's like playing telephone. They just said, we need this, and you know we can't tell you exactly why. Now, similarly, there can be initiatives in an organization like this, some things that cut across applications. So when will my item be delivered? It might be an example of that. Well, that's going to depend upon, you know, all the different applications might want that, but it depends if the item is available. If it's available, then it's just a question of shipping. Um, or it may be a, a, a question of where, which warehouse is it in and how do I get it to shipping and so on. Or... It may be a question of when is this thing going to be manufactured. So what you see is that all of the different applications are hit by this. So the initiative tends to just open up a collection of dependencies against all of these applications, who then cascade dependencies again through all of those reuse components. And it's just another level um, of, for which the people don't really understand what the goal is, why they're doing the work, and they're working on behalf of maybe an initiative for one requirement, uh, a different app for an, of another requirement, and yet another app for another requirement. There's no unification of what's happening in any particular sprint for these reuse components, and there's no idea of what the goal is or how to actually 
satisfy the need rather than literally satisfy the requirement. So the requirements tend to be a description of how to solve the problem in addition to what, what is being solved. Um, so again, lots of delays, lots of wasted time. Um, forget about accounting for, for your expenses, uh, you know, because these reuse components are working on behalf of this, that, and the other thing for any given time. It would take a lot of time tracking to figure out what the real cost of any particular piece of software is. Um, and there's very little understanding of the customer and, and what the customer's goals are. So now let's get back to Conway, because that's what we're, we're trying to talk about here. In Conway's law, the architecture reflects the organizational structure. So if you set up uh, three teams to work on a compiler, you're going to end up with a three-phase compiler. The architecture tends to follow the organizational structure. And that's what we found with our, with our scheme that I just described, which is really not that uncommon. It's pretty common. When I talk to people, they say, yeah, we got something very similar. So the inverse Conway maneuver says, well, if the architecture reflects the organizational structure, then changing the organizational structure is going to change the architecture. Well, that's interesting. But the architecture is probably not going to change overnight. You can change the organizational structure, but that architecture is probably, you know, wrapped pretty tight into the organizational memory. And there are domain experts and, and lots of reasons why the architecture is just not going to change overnight. And, I believe that's going to be the case. But I also think that changing the architecture is not really the point here. It's not the interesting point. The bigger point is that you can make the organizational structure work regardless of the architecture. That don't think that the, that the, the, the organizational structure has to follow the architecture. You can change your organizational structure to better reflect uh, the issue that you want to address. For example, minimizing dependencies and all that extra overhead work that comes with it. Um, but by the way, the architecture will eventually change as a result. So what you could set up is some nice organizational structure that has cross-functional teams that are also cross-domain teams. For example, for the web application, you might have teams that are, that are solving a collection of the vertical problem and you not only have developers and testers so that you satisfy that cross-functional aspect, but you also have uh, cross-domain teams. So you have representatives from the cart and pricing and catalog on the team so that you can solve a whole collection of problems without dependencies because all of the work is within the team. So you, when you get a requirement for this web app, you have the people on the team to satisfy. There's no outside dependencies. There's no negotiation. There's no need for project managers. There's no extra set of meetings. And there's no cascading of sprints trying to get these dependencies satisfied. So you can satisfy everything in, you know, theoretically, of course, in, in one sprint. Lots of practical problems will in intervene. However, this is probably a much better structure for minimizing the dependencies, minimizing that wasteful extra work, maximizing the understanding of what the real goal is here and so maximizing the understanding of the customer so you're going to get better quality delivery of function that better matches the requirements of that customer okay so you can the inverse conway maneuver says well you know you, if you rearrange the organizational structure you're going to change the architecture but what's really cool is that you should consider yourself uh, liberated from matching the organizational structure to the architecture and come up with a better organizational structure that's going to minimize your dependencies and your overhead. Okay, so I'm Jim Brisson. Thanks for watching and um, let me know if you need any help with any of this stuff. Thanks. Bye.